to one and a half cups of all-purpose flour we're going to be adding in one cup of instant oats and a teaspoon of fine salt um, you can add less or more depending on your tolerance of salt but i think this is exactly perfect for this recipe next we're going to combine this together to ensure that it's equally and evenly incorporated and the salt has been spread out and after that that's when we're going to be dealing with our milk after warming our milk for a minute or two, we'll be adding in a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half of instant dry yeast to our warm milk. Ensure that the milk is not too hot, otherwise it will kill our yeast. Anyway, after adding in our tablespoon or so of yeast into our warm milk, we're also going to be adding in our malt, which will help to add in that really lovely sweet flavor that we really like in Ooh, love in that bread um if you're not vegan or you don't have an allergy to honey or whatever you can use honey as well otherwise you can also just opt for sugar and if you're opting for sugar then you're just going to add in exactly the same measurements because it's one as to one ratio of malt or honey to sugar so you can just add in a quarter cup instead otherwise here because i'm vegan and also because i love malt and it has all these great benefits i'm using in a quarter cup of malt instead and then you just want to ensure that you get all of it out because we don't waste and then we're going to add in a quarter cup of oil i just realized that i could have made my life easier by using the oil first into the cup so that it can act as a layer to help the malt come out much easier but it's fine you know what it's fine it's okay it's fine um but here's a tip if you don't want it to get stuck and you don't want it to be too hard to remove whatever syrup sticky thing that you have rather try and get your oil in there so that it can act as like a a barrier that will help it be much easier for you to take the sticky stuff out like malt or honey or whatever it is that you want to use agave syrup or whatever next we're going to make a well in the middle of our dry mixture and then we're going to pour our wet mixture in the center i'm not adding everything in at once i'm going to add it in increments of two um just because it's easier to mix so at least that's how i find it i find it easier to mix when i add it in increments of two and then also i can also control how much liquid i want to put in it just in case sometimes it's a bit more wet or a bit more dry than usual so yeah i'm gonna add it in a second time after i'm done mixing in this first time and give that a proper proper mix and then we are done I let it proof rise for an hour in a warm place and look how it doubled in size. How beautiful, how beautiful. Um, after that, we're just going to knead it for 10 minutes and then let it proof rise for a second time on the pan. And don't mind that little voice. I just think I should address it now. I was just very excited about how it looked and my voice is not actually that squeaky. I just made it like that. Okay, okay. <laughs> some residual oil on my hands so I just decided to press that into the dough because you know <laughs> and going in that same line of thought I decided to use my hands too to press in the almond milk instead of brushing it in because my hands were dirty anyway and I might as well then just follow suit um, I used my hands and if you have a brush you can use a brush I'm not saying you should use your hands I'm not saying you should judge me either for using my hands just live your life be happy man it's a new year just it's life is too short okay <laughs> anyway and then we're gonna let that proof rise on the side and then put it in the oven to bake at 200 degrees for 30 minutes until it is smelling wonderful and divine in the kitchen on to a lovely soup this is the star this one right here this is the star of the dish the pumpkin and we're going to be using three cups of 
pumpkin, two cups of sweet potato and one and a half cups of carrots and one cup of onions. I'm gonna let that fry, fry, fry. I don't know why I'm speaking like that, sorry, I'm really hyper today. Um, I guess I'm just really excited because the soup was so delicious. It's, it's the soup pie. Anyway, we're gonna add a tablespoon or so of vegetable oil to the onions to let them fry a little bit until they are soft and golden and caramelized a little bit. And then to that, we're also adding in half a teaspoon of cumin seeds so that we can temper them together with the onions and the flavors can really be imbued in the soup really nicely. Um, if you don't have cumin seeds, it's fine. Then you can just use your cumin ground powder. Um, but if you're just using cumin ground powder, then I suggest you use one teaspoon to one and a half teaspoon instead of just half a teaspoon of ground cumin and half a teaspoon of whole seeds because then you don't have the whole seeds. After about five minutes, the onions would have browned a bit and the cumin seeds will start being very, very, very fragrant. I'm going to add in the rest of my spices, which are half a teaspoon each of turmeric and cumin, one teaspoon of dried thyme, one teaspoon of garlic powder and one teaspoon of ground allspice and one teaspoon of ground ginger. Unfortunately, I didn't have fresh ginger or fresh garlic, otherwise I would have opted for these. But these spices will do as well, as long as you use the correct um, ratios. Next, after toasting our spices for a little bit, then we're gonna add in the rest of our vegetables. Toasting is like tempering, it'll help to really um, enhance the flavors of the spices and really bring them out with the heat and the toasting. That will help to help to imbue much more flavor into your soup. Otherwise, you can just it. We're gonna add in all our vegetables and let them get a little bit toasted in the pot nicely. I know using toast is weird, but you know what I'm trying to say. Um, doing this will help to give them a nice smoky flavor, which will help to add another dimension of flavor to our soup. We're trying to layer flavors, guys. We're really trying to layer flavors. Otherwise, you can just directly add water as soon as you put the vegetables in and you don't have to do the step either. Next, I'm just going to season the vegetables with some salt. Um, this is very important because we're trying to layer our flavors, so we try and add some salt at any cooking step of our cooking process. Um, I also added in about two tablespoons or so of water to try and deglaze the bottom of the pan and let the flavor go into the vegetables. And then we're just going to close the vegetables for five minutes and let that do its thing and then add in our actual serious, serious water to cook to boil our vegetables into a lovely, a lovely soup eventually. And we're just gonna do this until they are tender. If you want as well, you could have also just opted to roast your vegetables in the oven before putting them in the pot. That's basically what I'm trying to resemble here and that's why I'm using this method, except I don't have to make that many dishes. After five minutes, we're gonna be adding in our liquids, which will be equal parts water and coconut milk. That is measured to two cups each, um, adding in equal parts because I think it brings in the perfect balance of creaminess for the soup. Otherwise, you can add more water if you want and just one tin of coconut milk. some for the dollop or it's fine I have coconut cream I'm going to use it for the dollop This is the last step of spices. I'm adding in each half a teaspoon of smoked paprika and habanero powder. Um, habanero powder is basically chili powder, but like more. Um, this is optional. You don't have to do this if you have some sort of aversion to dairy chili food. Uh, this will just help to add some chilliness and spiciness, which is what I'm looking for in winter. Like in the back of your 
throat um, but then again you can skip this step as well if you want after it has cooled down for a while you don't want it to be too hot you're gonna blend them is melting <laughs> I'm gonna give it a taste test although I already know what it tastes like it's divine it's spicy I chose the spicy version I added some chili and the coconut cream helps to cut down that spiciness and also complements the sweet pumpkin mm. I'm gonna have it with this bread as well. Just dip it in there. This bread. Mm. It's soft. It's moist. Look at the crust. It's nutritious. I don't feel bad eating a lot of it. Mm. This is really, really good. Also, if you're gluten-free, you can try and use the gluten-free all-purpose flour um, with the oats as well. And usually, people prefer to use the what's that other oats? The rolled oats instead of the instant oats. And more, I only added a, a third cup of the malt to make it vegan. <laughs> I'm being messy, but you can use honey if you prefer honey and you don't like the taste of malt. Although you don't really taste it here. Um, what you taste is goodness. Wonderful, wonderful goodness. Wonderful, wonderful goodness. Mm. Wait. <coughs> and there you have it. My perfect pumpkin soup with my oatmeal bread. These two are really wonderful, especially during these last days are a bit cold and rainy um it's very hearty very warming the spiciness really helps to to do something to your throat it's really good um i really suggest that you you give this recipe a try and the bread as well divine 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 i'm telling you and the soup freeze as well as well as the bread actually they both both freeze well for up to three months in the freezer so you can make this ahead of time and then keep it in the freezer and then defrost it and then have it again and again and again and again because why wouldn't you and yeah that is my pumpkin soup and my homemade oatmeal bread thank you for watching please give it a thumbs up if you like this video and if you didn't like this video well give it a thumbs up anyway <laughs> um and thank you for watching please share and subscribe if you haven't already see you later bye